Hi friends, welcome back to Arc Tutorials. This is Angular 10 full tutorial series for absolute beginners. We are continuing to learn about Angular forms and in today's episode we will learn about how to add validations in our template driven forms. If you remember in the previous episode we learned all about template driven forms, how to create a form, how to add different types of input elements like type equal to text, type or text area, select or checkbox etc. Make sure that you check out the previous video which is part 55 so that you have continuity in your learning. Today we are going to add validations to the same form. Let's get started. This is part 56 of the Angular 10 complete tutorial playlist. I have planned around 100 tutorials for you in this particular series with detailed explanations. The playlist link is in the description box below. Make sure you check it out. The notes that we prepare for our uh, during the episodes that notes link is also in the description box below that goes to the github link make sure you check it out so far we have covered 55 episodes right from basic to episode number 0 2 so far and if you have any doubts in any of these topics that I've covered earlier feel free to reach out to me in the comment section I will try and help you as much as I can today we are learning about adding validations in template driven forms a quick note to our uh, viewers who are joining us new in this particular episode. Template driven forms are very easy to use. They are very simple. They are very straightforward. They are basically most of the code goes into your template file, which is your HTML file, right? The validations that we are going to add today are also mostly the HTML5 default uh, validations that we are going to add. That's what it supports. Very minimal code goes into the component, right? So that's why the validations cannot be very complex ones right you cannot add aggressive ones but you can have basic ones that you want to add in the previous episode i showed you how to add step by step and enable the template driven forms so make sure you check it out we added different types of uh, input types like text checkbox etc select and text area in the previous episode as well to the form uh, so make sure again you check it out i'm going to extend that form today by adding the um, validations so what we are going to do is we are going to tell that we are going to put some validations which are html5 validations like required min length max length checked regular expression pattern etc and we will say that if the form doesn't uh, complete the criteria of these validations it should be disabled right because Angular internally will track this particular forms automatically, right? So what happens is when, once you mention that it's the attributes which are like required, etc. Angular form internally will track it and say that no, this field is required. So it will change its state accordingly, right? So the best part about this is that Angular will internally track all the form states for you, like pristine, dirty, etc or uh, invalid etc so, right so we are going to see that in action let's get started i'm going to show you that in hands-on right so first let me fire up the application hope we don't already have it okay so it's going to start and then i'm going to first show you how um, we can get that i'm going to show you the form that we did which is for the add customer and then we'll going to add the validations Let's just give it a minute. In the meanwhile, please do consider liking this tutorial if you're enjoying. Please do consider subscribing to my channel. If you're also enjoying, I'll be bringing more tutorials for you. All right, so our application is compiled. Let's go and localhost. So we get a simple form. That's what we did, um, right? So that's what we did. So now what we are going to do is, let's say once you fill, them, fill in this form, Right. Once once the user fills this form, this button should let's format a little bit. Right. Going to add a little bit of formatting. Okay. So let's enter some value checkbox. Select um, any any details you can add. Customer, new customer, or um, you know say some customer that you want to add and this button should be disabled right why we are going to add that conditions and I'm going to say now see this 
I'm going to say that this checkbox he should accept the right now I'm going to say it is checked now I'm going to say required right what I'm saying is that this should be clicked okay this is a field which is required that means user should accept terms and conditions if not then disable the form so how do I do that so there is a state called disabled equal to and I'm going to say if what is our form name it is at customer form so take it here bring it here and say dot now here this is the trick guys now we have a different options that it will track internally like invalid valid etc so now I'm saying if the form is not valid disable it okay that's what I'm saying that it's a directive right disabled if this form is not valid here I'm using a not operator then disable that particular form so now you see the, the button itself is disabled because we added that validation angular internally tracks it and says that no this was required now it is enabled see see the behavior now I uncheck it it gets disabled I add it it gets now similarly try for others let's add the same logic to others let's say this is required right what happens again same logic right the moment you say it is required it will say that these are all required fields right so let's say this is also required now now if you if I just fill in this it is still disabled because I need to fill the value okay so now I filled a value it is still disabled because I need to accept one of this right so you understand the concept now that these are all the validations that angular internally tracks right these are all the HTML5 default uh, validations like required right except I'll show you others so right and here you go some value it is enabled you select it gets disabled right that being said now what I'm going to do next is going to show you that this should be of min length equal to 10 right this is yet another HTML5 validation that we have required min length equal to 10 so I'm saying that now that wherever we enter it should be 10 characters now let's see I'll select this it is enabled because it is more than 10 now see so minimum length it says 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 right so it's enabled the moment I make it 9 it gets disabled again right so like this you can add min length max length pattern etc that you want but these are all default HTML5 validations right again these are good if you are building a basic form that you want to use right but if you're trying to build any advanced uh, complex form structures which requires com you know custom validations etc then reactive forms is the go-to help we are going to learn that very soon today's episode I'll cover only validations for you in the next episode we will learn how to reset template driven forms right now that we filled a form the first in the previous episode we learned how to create a form today we learned how to add validations to it next episode I'm going to show you how to reset a form quickly right and then we'll start with the reactive forms if you're liking the tutorials hit that like button if you're enjoying please do consider buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash arc tutorials thank you so much and see you in the next episode stay tuned